So you're thinking about moving to Richmond, Virginia, but you want to know the good, the bad, the yin, the yang, the pros and the cons of living in RVA. That's what we're going to be covering in this video because we get this question all the time from folks who are moving to the area and just say, hey, where, where should I live? You know, should it be north of the river? Should it be south of the river? Should it be in the city itself? Um, should we go to one of the surrounding counties like Hanover, Henrico, Chesterfield, New Kent, Goochland, Powhatan? There's a lot of options around the RVA. So that's what we'll be discussing in the, today's video. And if you stick around to the end, I'll tell you one of the best kept secrets about Richmond, Virginia. And we're getting after it right now. If this is your first time to the channel, and you want to know everything there is about living in Richmond, Virginia and the surrounding counties of Hanover, Henrico, Chesterfield, New Kent, Goochland, and Powhatan, then subscribe below and hit the notifications bell so you can be the first to know about the market in Richmond, Virginia. My name's Scott Dernley. I'm with Joiner Fine Properties and my team and I get calls every day from folks like you who are looking to move to Richmond, Virginia. And whether you're moving in nine days or 90 days, give us a call shoot us a text, send us an email, and we'll help you make a smooth move to Richmond, Virginia. So like I said earlier, today we are going to actually talk about the pros and cons of living in Richmond, Virginia. And when I say Richmond, I'm not talking about RVA as a whole, I'm talking about Richmond City proper. Um, Richmond's, Richmond proper has five MLS areas. Uh, that's areas 10, 20, 30, 50 and 60. Three of those are north of the James, and that's 10, 20, and 30. Two of those are south of the James, that's 50 and 60. Um, we also have 39 total zip codes in Richmond, Virginia, so it's hard to really talk about all of those. But in area 10, sort of if you're looking in the Church Hill area, you'll be looking at 23223. The fan, you're kind of looking at 23220. In the museum district, you're looking at 23221. So then if you go just east out in the area 20, um, that's also 23221, but you have 23226 in the near west end. If you then hop over to area 30, which is the north side, some of the uh, predominant zip codes there are 23227, which is the Bellevue area, and 23222, which is Ginter Park. Now if we go south of the river, if you look at area 50, 23224, 23234 are our main Area 50 zip codes. And then Area 60, 23225 will cover Stratford Hills and Westover Hills. And then 23235 will be Huguenot Bonaire. So those are, again, there's 39, but those are some of the sort of major ones, I would say, uh, the more prolific zip codes in those areas. And uh, doing research for today's video, I did go out to YouTube and I saw some videos about moving to RVA and why not to move to RVA. Um, you know, there were things like, oh, we have really humid summers, we have terrible pollen. Uh, well, you know, we are in the South. Uh, I don't think it's uh, someone needs to go to a YouTube video to know it's going to be hot in Richmond in the summer and that we're going to have pollen. So uh, this is not one of those should I or should I not move to Richmond, Virginia videos. This is, I know I'm moving to Richmond, Virginia, but should I live in the city versus one of the surrounding counties? Or conversely, I already live in the RVA and I'm thinking about moving somewhere in town and I am considering Richmond as an option, the city, uh, versus where I live now and what are some pros and cons of living in the city versus one of the counties So that's sort of going to be the com the um, the gist of today's video and uh, We're going to hit it right now with our first pro of living in Richmond, Virginia All right So I think one of the very first pros of living in the actual city of Richmond is it's just a very convenient location clearly if you work downtown Anywhere you uh, you know live in the city is going to be an easier commute than one of the counties. It's just going to be easier to get to. Most likely you will not hit a toll. However, if you live in the city of Richmond, south of the river, in area 50 or 60, there is a chance you'll hit the downtown expressway and get to it and hit a toll that way. But there are other bridges 
um, Nickel Bridge, um, uh, the Mayo Bridge. There's other ways to get downtown, but if you without hitting a toll, but if you do go downtown expressway, you will hit a toll. But it's super convenient. And then let's say you live in the city, but you work at you know an area like Innsbruck. Let's say you work um, at CarMax or um, the uh, Capital One campus off of 288. Uh, you will be you know, headed out of the city, but you're gonna be going against traffic. Uh, same thing, let's say you work at like the Amazon Fulfillment Center down uh, 95 South. You're gonna be going against traffic. So while you will be getting on the highway, you'll be waving at the people the other way that are going a lot slower than you because um, you know, you're know you going against traffic. Um, and then same thing in the evening when you're coming home, everybody that's leaving the city and going back to the suburbs, uh, they're going to be going, you'll be going against traffic there too. Um, then let's say you, you work somewhere down closer to New Kent or Williamsburg. Um, the city is really easy to get to go east uh, from the city with just hopping on 64 East. So um, it is very convenient. And uh, I always talk about the airport. If you live in the city, the airport is very easy to get to. Um, if you look at my map video, we talk about different routes um, on how to get to the airport. Um, from the map video and um, you know it's really not that hard uh, the airports in eastern Henrico which is just outside of the city um, on the eastern side of, of Richmond so great central location uh, very convenient to so many things um, so that, that's what I would say pro number one would be all right let's think of let's look at pro number two pro number two for living in the city of Richmond the city itself um, I would say it's going to be your shopping and entertainment options. Um, as with most cities, that is sort of your entertainment hub. A lot of what you're going to do or want to do is going to be in the city of Richmond. Um, if you look at the video I did, the map tour, when I got to the fan, you're going to see great restaurants in the fan area. Uh, they're all local neighborhood type restaurants. Um, very, very nice. Um, when, if you in that map tour, if you head over to Scott's Edition, there are breweries and restaurants just about everywhere. I've said this many, many times in these videos. Richmond's brewing scene has gotten national attention. Lots and lots of um, you know, good things to say about our breweries. Uh, you have things like the Flying Squirrels. That's our double A. Um, pro baseball team. They're right there on Arthur Ashe Boulevard in the city. They're a ton of fun and they bring a lot of value to the city. Um, gosh, we have the museums on Arthur Ashe Boulevard. Um, those are some of the really, really best museums in Virginia. Uh, the Museum of Fine Art, the Museum of Natural History, uh, the Science Museum on Broad Street is absolutely something else. They've got an incredible planetarium. Um, then we have things like there's a great new Top Golf um, that's right there in the city. That's that's just a ton of fun. Um, so then uh, down by uh, VCU we have the Altria Theater. Uh, we actually get um, Broadway shows when they come, you know, out when they decide to leave uh, Broadway. They'll travel and uh, Altria Theater. We get amazing shows there. And a lot of good um, you know concerts and bands there so just there is just a lot to do in the city of Richmond um, you know if you're coming from New York City or you know another major major city uh, you know Richmond's gonna seem kind of small but for a relatively small city there is a lot to lot going on as far as dining and entertainment and things of that nature you just have to keep your ear to the ground and um, you know, there's there's lots of things to do. Uh, it's just getting ready to hit, hit summer, so we have our Friday concert series at Browns Island. That'll be kicking off. That's a lot of fun. So again, just so many things to do. And there's also a lot of you know shopping and entertainment kind of go together. Uh, so there is great shopping in Richmond for like little neat little t um, sort of eclectic um, local stores. You have Carytown, which is about an eight block. Um, uh, row of shops on either side uh, between um, the boulevard and 195 um, that's Carytown. amazing little shops and restaurants all through that eight block area uh, that's definitely something to check out um, if you go a little farther west you have the shops at willow lawn There's tons of good stuff there um, for you 
And then weirdly, if you keep going even a little bit more west, um, and I've mentioned this in many videos, um, Short Pump Town Center is super close if you live in the city. It's just a hop on Interstate 64 and you're there in about 15 minutes. And that is absolutely one of the best shopping destinations in all of Richmond. Um, now, if you live south of the James, let's say you're in Area 50 or Area 60, um, Stratford Hills, Westover Hills, uh, Huguenot, Bonaire, if you're in that area, you have the shops at Stony Point that are going to be very easy to get to, and there's great shopping there. And then throughout the Bonaire area, there's little shops and restaurants through there that are kind of neat for the more local flair. So again, being the city, um, that is where you have a lot of that major cultural th you know, things and, um, and entertainment and, and restaurants and just neat little venues to see concerts. Um, so there is just a lot going on in the city. Um, when it comes to um, you know dining and entertainment shopping that kind of stuff so if, if that's your cup of tea you won't be disappointed with a little old RVA because we have a lot to offer in that department all right now we're going to talk about some of the cons to living in Richmond you know while there are some nice pros there's definitely some things you want to think about if you're living in the city of Richmond one of those is going to be property taxes Richmond has by far the highest tax rate per per 1,000 of assessed value of any of uh, you know the surrounding areas, and it's not really even close. All right, so going from highest to lowest on your um, assess your on tax rate per 1,000 of assessed value, Richmond, Virginia is coming in at the highest by a long shot at 1.2 dollars per assessed value. Uh, per $1,000 of assessed value, so 1.2. Uh, Chesterfield is our next highest at 0.93, so 93 cents per 1,000 of assessed value will be your annual taxes. Henrico is checking in right under that at 85 cents. Then Hanover, now we have a pretty nice drop. Hanover is going down to 68 cents. Powhatan is 67 cents per 1,000. New Kent is 66 cents per 1,000. And then at the low end of our scale, we have Goochland County coming in at 51 cents per 1,000 of assessed value. So we go from the high of Richmond at 1.2, a dollar 20, uh, to 51 cents in Goochland County. That is a pretty darn big swing. So to make these numbers make a little more sense in context of an actual annual tax payment. So let's look at these tax rates with a house value on it to help put it in context. If you bought a $500,000 house in the city of Richmond, you'd be looking at $6,000 of annual taxes or $500 a month. Going down the list, if we go into Chesterfield County with the next highest tax rate, that $500,000 house would cost you $4,650 per year or $388 a month. When we head into Henrico County, that same $500,000 house is gonna run you $4,250 a year or $354 a month. Going down the list, um, Powhatan, New Kent, and Hanover were all right within a penny of each other, plus or minus. So I'm going to lump those together and say if you buy a $500,000 house in either of those three counties, it's going to cost you $3,350 or $279 per month. Now coming in uh, with the award for our lowest taxes, we're going to get down to Goochland County and we give them a big high five for lowest taxes. Uh, in Goochland, your $500,000 house will have annual taxes of $2,250 or $213 a month. So that's $213 a month for $500 or uh, for a $500,000 house, all the way up to $500 a month in the city of Richmond. There's a pretty big difference there, um, you know, in, in taxes. So that is just going to be something you want to think about when you're making the decision to move into the city of Richmond is you're going to be paying higher taxes. It's just the way it is to live in a city. All right, so con number two of living in the city is house prices 
tend to be higher in the city. It's just the way that it is. I think most uh, metropolitan areas, it's like that. The city costs more to live in and than the surrounding counties. So you just don't quite get the bang for your buck in the city. Uh, let's, as of the time of shooting this video, I ran some numbers from our multiple listing service. And as of today, if you are looking for a four bedroom, two and a half bath in the city of Richmond, you're going to be paying on an average of $611,000 with an average year built of 1976. I'm not going to do a county by county comparison for every county like I did the tax rate, but I'm going to look at two of our other major surrounding counties of Henrico and Chesterfield. In Henrico County, if you're looking for a four bedroom, two and a half bath house, that's going to average you, based on today's active listings, $480,000 in a year built of 1986. And then if we go over to Chesterfield, uh, that's where we're going to get the most bang for the buck in Chesterfield County. Your four bedroom, two and a half bath home right now, active listings are averaging $430,000 with an average year built of 1994. So just something to think of, your dollar is going to stretch farther in the counties and then I guarantee you if I went and looked at the uh, other counties of Hanover, Powhatan, New Kent and Goochland, your dollar would probably even go farther than um, Henrico or Chesterfield. But I didn't want to get into the minutia of all of the different counties, but just that's a good comparison for you looking at Richmond versus Henrico and Chesterfield County. So again, your dollar is not going to go as far for you in the city, and that is something to consider uh, when you're when you're moving to the city. Now, one nice thing is when you're choosing a house, if you are looking, if you're trying to avoid a HOA, one nice thing is there are, most of the older neighborhoods in the city of Richmond do not have a homeowners association. So that would be a a bonus if you're not looking for a homeowners association. So that's the second con, dollar just doesn't go quite as far in the city. All right, the third con of living in the city of Richmond are gonna be the schools. Uh, there's really no way to sugarcoat this here, but uh, the city of Richmond is not renowned for its fantastic schools. Um, I would recommend going to niche.com, uh, greatschools.org and doing your own research. But uh, I think you will find uh, your in agreement with me on that. So let's just say you go to niche.com and you sort things by school district. Uh, that will tell you in the greater Richmond area that Goochland County is our number one school district. Then number two will be Powhatan, three will be Chesterfield, four will be Henrico, five will be Colonial Heights, six will be Hanover, seven will be Prince George, eight will be New Kent, and we could go down and down and down that list, but you're not gonna to get to Richmond for a while. Um, Richmond is just not that highly rated. Now there are some exceptions. I would say there are a few elementary schools here and there that uh, might you might find acceptable, like Fox Elementary in the Fan. Uh, that is actually a very good school. Mary Mumford. Um, right there in the city that is a great elementary school so there again this is talking big picture there are some exceptions they seem to be most in the elementary schools uh, once you get up to middle and high school I don't think you're going to uh, like what you see there quite as much so then you're left with two options do I move to the uh, one of the suburbs with better schools at that time or do I send my kid to private school uh, private school is an option and we have some absolutely amazing private schools in Richmond, Virginia, but they are pretty pricey. Um, St. Christopher's looks like it's that's one great private school. It's averaging around $26,000 a year and uh, Richmond Collegiate is checking in at just under $30,000 a year. So um, again, you do have that private school option, but it is not cheap to go to private school in Richmond, Virginia. So. Again, if schools are a big uh, thing for you, a good public school system, then um, you know I think you might want to look somewhere other than the city of Richmond or plan on moving when your children get to a certain age or the private school route. So I would say another con of living in the city of Richmond is there's just a lack of new construction. 
Um, the city has been built out for quite a while. So, you know, you're just not going to have any new neighborhoods like you're going to find in uh, Midlothian, like you're going to find in Glen Allen, um, in parts of Henrico County, out in Goochland. Um, really, all of the suburbs, um, the Mosley area, Chesterfield, gosh, there's new home subdivision after new home subdivision um, out in the Mosley area. So you're simply not going to find that in the city of Richmond for single-family houses just because it's been built out for years. Um, will there be a new home here and there? Yes, a lot of times that's going to be a teardown when someone has a you know nice lot. Uh, house isn't that great they'll tear it down build a new home so again there's always exceptions to the rule um, we do have if you're looking for say like a high-rise condo uh, something like that there is that product that crops up in the city from time to time and those are really neat if that's what you're looking for but as far as single family homes um, you're not going to find a ton of new construction op options and then your average age for your resales um, if, if we you know, went and looked at that, we're going to look at a fairly older average age. So many of the homes you buy in the city uh, will need, if they haven't been renovated, you're going to be looking at some substantial renovation costs, you know, to bring that up to, um, you know, feel like a newer home. So again, that's just something to consider if you're looking for that newer home. Um, that's going to be a little bit of a tough sell in the, in the city of Richmond. Well, that's it for our pros and cons of living in the city of Richmond, Virginia. I hope you found this information useful, and it's this type of conversations we have with clients all the time when they're moving to the area and just trying to decide where to set down roots. Richmond is a really great place to live if you're on the younger side and you want all those entertainment and dining options uh, because the city has a lot to offer, but the cost of purchasing a home and the property taxes can be prohibitive. As you get a little bit older and your earnings increase, the city becomes a little bit more affordable, but then if you're young and starting a family, the schools become an issue. So the city can be a bit of a catch-22. Now, um, I've met a lot of uh, older folks that are nearing retirement where uh, income and, and the purchasing power is not a problem. Schools aren't an issue for them because uh, they're children are all you know have long been empty nesters and they want to live close to shopping and dining and um, so in entertainment and so that's you know a really nice option for those folks so again uh, it's, it's just all these things are things to consider when moving into the actual city of Richmond and I'd love to discuss this with you and discuss your options if that's something you're interested in looking at. Because again, uh, the city is a vibrant place. There's lots to do. It's just you have to think about all the aspects of it. So uh, I appreciate you taking the time to look at the video. And if you uh, need to talk to me more about the city of Richmond, give me a call, shoot me a text, send me an email. All of that is in the description below. And until next time, I hope to show you around town. Take care.